Uhuru TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electionary campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 1-453-3407 at 24-hour news station. Good afternoon, wherever you are watching Court TV News, and this is Court Digest. News is printing what somebody else doesn't want printed, and all else is advertised. So says the wise. Well, it's Sunday, and my name is Tulu. Or Germany. Well, Sunday is the most difficult day to greet people because you don't know whether to say Happy New Week or Happy Weekend because in the Hebrew lunar calendar, Sunday is the last day of the week. So you could just say Happy Weekend. In the English calendar, it's the first day of the week. So I'll just play safe and say Happy Sunday to you and thanks for making our time to watch Core Digest this Sunday afternoon. Well, where shall we go from here? Well, the newspapers are replete and the headlines too are screaming with what's going on right here. In spite of assurances from the military authorities, soldiers have continued to seal off the major newspaper distribution depots in Abuja and some other parts of the country. Uh, so we want to ask the question, uh, military clampdown on Nigeria, is Nigeria back to dictatorship? Military clamp down on Nigeria. Is Nigeria back to dictatorship? That's the one million dollar question we're asking you this afternoon on Core Digest. I'm not going to be the one to answer that question. Shiji Akinso, you know, is right with me on the show and is a legal practitioner to answer the question with me. Hi, good, mo good afternoon. Good Happy Sunday to you. Same to you as well. I must say a big thank you to you for making our time to you. Uh, be part of the show today, despite your busy schedule. If you went on this show now, what would you have been doing now? Well, I'll be in church, praising God. <laughs> <laughs> and asking for our, praying for our Shiba girls to return back. Oh my, yeah. Back mm. to their homes and back to the States. Mm. Uh, because as it stands now, <sighs> the 234 girls are missing right now. Mm. We don't know where they are, in what state or in what country, because as, we, as the information reaching us is that Chad, Cameroon, and other parts of Nigeria, uh, some parts of Nigeria, especially Borno and Adamawa State, house these 234 girls. Now, Shiji, just like a twist to that one, yes. uh, we were woken by the news of military authorities clamping down on uh, the uh, media publications in Nigeria, some newspapers in some parts of the country. Now, Judge Orwell says journalism is printing what someone else doesn't want printed and every other thing is just public relations. So what are you going to say about the Freedom of Information Act if the military is now doing this to us? Well, what I would say is simply this now. Where power is misused, abuse is inevitable. Mm. And if you do not know the genesis of something, the revolution will hit you hard. If you don't know the genesis of something, the revolution is going to hit you hard. Now, when... Uh, at the Senate level, when they were asking for the FOI bill, that's the Freedom of Information bill, yeah. to be passed, there was some kind of uh, delay in passing that bill. Even when the bill was read the first time, the second time at the floor, the House of Representatives at NAS level, there was, some, there was some kind of delay in the release of that kind of bill. When it eventually came to pass, because uh, it gives the, 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 the press, both the print media and the mass media, the information to disseminate information to the public to know what is going on in their country. This clamp down on the, the print media, is, it's um, an aberration. Aberration. A serious violation of the Constitution. Because it it's negates the freedom of the press to actually perform their duties to inform the public. This is what's happened. For example, now, the excuse the military gave going by let me use the word, the director, the director of military, that's DMI, Director of Military Intelligence, that some 
information that will hamper the security of this nation are passing through the print media. Can they tell us what information is passing through the print media that will hamper the security of the nation? Mm. Now, Boko Haram, for example, now, the, what they do right now, it's, it's, it's appalling. Killing innocent souls, kidnapping girls, bombing, and some few things have been said about, some con constructive criticism have been said about the military, and they're taking it heartfelt. No. I don't think it's a very good way for the military to go about clamping down media houses and seizing papers, burning them, cheering them, and then maybe arresting some few journalists and what have you. We are just like, I see, we're in the military era. What's the difference of the military era during the time of G General Ibrahim, Badaw Sabangida, and Abacha? And now, during Jonathan, good luck, Jonathan's era, there is no difference. I don't see any difference in that era. Because during the military era, if anything is printed in the media, it's either the media houses are closed down, the editors are arrested, journalists are beaten up and tortured, and their newspapers burnt down or they are closed down. The same thing is happening now. So can we say that we're actually actually practicing democracy? We're not practicing democracy, I don't think so. Okay, in, respect. Now, in that case, the federal government has continued its clampdown on the media by stopping circulation of newspapers in some parts of the country. And now you're saying that you do not strongly believe that we are practicing democracy. So let me put it to you then. Are we back in the military era? We can call it military democracy. Military democracy. Let's just call it military democracy. <laughs> that's a, a military in democracy uniform just trying to, like, uh, wove in sheep clothing. Yes, that's what I call it. Because if you ask me, that's okay. Let's, let's just give the military a, a, a fair chance. Let's give them a yellow card, not just give them a red card outrightly. What's the reason for their clamping down on media houses and going against the media? They said, and I quote, one of their major generals said that there is information security information going through the media that is going to is against the national security as it were and nothing has been done concerning that okay how do you go about it you either you call the media houses or call the editors or the editors in chief and say hey look there's some information going through your papers we want you to stop them not going doing the barbaric act of seizing papers, destroying papers, going to media houses, going to the media agencies and destroying papers. That's not the way it's done. You find out from the source. You go to the source, you nip it in the bond. You go to the media houses, you ask the editors-in-chief, you ask the editors what you're printing is against the national security. It's hampering our national security. Okay, for example now, they're criticizing you, the military, you're not doing your job as you're supposed to do it and you don't like it. That's constructive criticism. It's good one that's how just to put you on the right step to know what you're doing. And they don't like it. They're taking it the bitter, they're taking the bitter pill and they're swallowing, no, no, we don't want this. It's either we destroy the people. So this that doesn't stop the information from going out. That doesn't stop the information from going out. I remember late Ghani Fahim, me, me so rest in peace. When he said some things about Sabacha then, he was arrested not less than 37 times, more than that anyway. Been to several, uh, uh, various prisons because he was trying to pass an information across to Nigeria that what your leader is doing, the junta then, is wrong. Now, can somebody tell me the difference between the military era now, the military era then, and democracy? Because I still see this as the military era there and now. Because um, Jonathan said something recently that they will not allow Togri and um, what have you doing. And Rigging. And Rigging doing that. Uh, uh, to me, it's just like... Um, speaking with his tongue in his cheek. Because if he knows what he's doing, because in the past elections, we had a lot of rigging and a lot of toggling. Many people lost their lives, even not their lives, they lost their hands and their legs. Some fatherless, motherless, and childless, because they want to be there at all costs. Now, let's forget the, 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 the president, for example, because he's not really doing his job as he ought to do it very well. The military, are they doing their job? Have they found our girls, the ship of girls? Because in most of the media now, it's, it's between the military, what the military has said, and what the Boko Haram has done. The Boko Haram insurgents, they are very, very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. They know what they are doing. They know how to go about it. They are more sophisticated than our military. The military, they don't know what they are doing. It's easier for them to clamp down on media houses than to get the Boko Haram themselves and release our girls. What they are sent to do, they are not doing it. They are doing something else. It's a pity. Gigi, the last time someone said what you just said, that the Boko Haram sect uh, was more sophisticated than our military, yes. it generated a lot of controversy. Now, you just said the president isn't doing his job 
as he ought to. Why did you say that? Oh, well, let, let's look at this way. I know the quotes a, a reverend, a particular reverend, maybe Tony Bakari, for example. I, he's one of my idols. I respect him a lot. And he's a, he's a lawyer and also a pastor. He said the president conducted a state wedding. A state wedding for his daughter. Where people were sending no matter of cars, gifts, they were rolling money, money wasn't spent anyhow, a lot of money was spent by the federal government for that wedding. Fine. But what about 234 girls who were kidnapped by a soldier known as Boko Haram? What is he doing to, f to, to, en to, en to endeavor that they are released? Can he not just suspend? As, as we speak right now, I can tell you right now, Otonilo, that our dear president and his cronies are busy going about doing rally. Okay, they are doing rally to come back in 2015. But they are not bothered about girls that are kidnapped. They are not bothered about the state of the economy or the state of the nation as it were. We, 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 are, like, we are like backstabbing ourselves. Because in 2015, we don't know what's going to come up. Because if this set of people don't come in, who knows? They are busy trading blame, saying it's the APC or the PDP or whoever it is that is behind the Boko Haram, but we don't know who is behind the Boko Haram and why all these things are happening. A lot of blood has been shed in this country. The president ought to do the right thing. Take the right step. Take the bulls by the horns. Ensure that the security of this level is lifted up. As in, the money we spent on security, the budgets allocated to security, I don't see any, it's, it's a far cry from what we have in the country. Because if we spend so much money on security, how come Boko Haram is being, is taking us for a ride? Because according to what I hear, we don't know who is funding Boko Haram. We don't know from where and for what. Okay, fine. That has happened. Now, instead of facing Boko Haram, you're clamping down on media houses. What's that? Does that give Nigeria a good image? And we are talking about FYB on one side, and freedom of the press, and you're already seizing, clamping down on media houses and print media, that doesn't make sense. That's an aberration. That's, um, how would I call it, blowing hot and cold. Now, talking about aberration and blowing hot and cold, you are a legal practitioner, yes. and I'm happy you're familiar with this terrain. The 1999 Constitution, as amended in 2011, uh, has got a chapter that's so all-inclusive, Chapter 2, talks about the fundamental uh, principles and the directive objectives of the state policy. Yes. Right, uh, that's so interesting. It cannot exhaust that chapter. Now. Section 22 of that 1999 Constitution, as amended in 2011, talks about the objectives of the mass media. It says the press, radio, television, and other agents and agencies of the mass media shall at all times be free to uphold the fundamental objectives of this chapter, the chapter 2, right, and uphold the accountability and responsibility of the government to the people. And in doing that, all we say is clamp down on their activity. How can, how can the media, the mass media, wriggle out of this? That is why, I'm, that's why I keep saying this. I keep saying it. Are we actually practicing what they call democracy? Are, are what is inside the letter of the constitution being followed, hook, line, and sinker, signed, sealed, and delivered? Are they being followed? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's why I say that we still have some elements of the military in this, our, our, our government. We still have some elements of military. Is this our government? It's just, was it not some few days ago that if uh, Lagos State government increased the school fees of the last two students and they went on rampage and some of them were arrested due for some other reasons anyway, they were hijacking buses. But this one in the constitution is more like a paper tiger. Please excuse me to say that it's a paper tiger because one, <laughs> you write something in the constitution and you're not following what is inside the constitution. Mm. So if the, the print media, as it were, if they publish what they are, they are, they are outlined and designated to do in the constitution, why mustn't it be followed? They are upholding what they have to do in the constitution. They are passing information for the, for the government to see and follow. But they are not following such. They are not. They are not following such. Because if they are following such, why is this happening? Can they explain to us why it's happening? Is there any reason for burning newspapers, tearing them down, arresting journalists, clamping down on media houses? Is there any reason? Can they give us any excuse 
There's none. Whatever is in the constitution should just be set aside because in the military, when they come in, the first thing they do is they set up a decree or edict and they set aside the constitution. Mm. Here, they didn't set aside this constitution. The constitution is there, but it's just, it's powerless, it's useless. Because the chapter one, section one says, we the people of Nigeria. Where is the we? Who are the we? Please remove that we and put PDP. It's not we. When they say we, we is all encompassing. It means we, that's Nigerians, the north, the south, the east, the west, the Yorubas, the Hausas, the Igbos, and other tribes. All the Fulanese, the Chikiri, exactly. what have you. Exactly. But that's, there's no we. It's just the government. It's what we are practicing what we call oligarchy. Government for a few, not democracy. I'm sorry to say that. Because if you say we are practicing democracy, what has happened now? Because if Ghani me, for example, sorry I mentioned his name again, were alive, this thing, <laughs> he would have had to the courts. <laughs> he would have had to the courts and said, hey, no, what you did is an aberration. It's against constitution. He was cited the particular section. So the constitution, that part you just read, the constitution, is just the latter part. We see how the first alteration, the second alteration, and the third alteration, 2010, of the constitution. In those parts of the, of the constitution, the Freedom of Information Bill had not come to be. They were still suppressing that particular act. Now, no, let's wait for a while before we put that one. Now it is there. They are not obeying it. It's difficult for them. Why is it difficult for them? Because they know that if they are following it, if they are following what they put there in the constitution, I think we'll go a long way in Nigeria. We want to go a long way in Nigeria. Just uh, a little break away from that. Barely 24 hours after the visit of President Goodluck Jonathan to Ekede State as part of his campaign for uh, PDP candidate Ayofayo Shei, the APC rally uh, made to sweep the feet of PDP from Oluyemi Kaede Stadium was disrupted by mobile policemen. Our reporter, Rashid Rashid, uh, got back to us, telling us that the procession of the APC leaders and supporters were disrupted outside the stadium by mobile policemen after they had swept the stadium. And of course, one person uh, was allegedly shot dead. Uh, that's uh, reaching us from a kitty state. Uh, well, if you're just joining us or you're just tuning into uh, this frequency, this is uh, Court TV News and uh, you're watching Court Digest this Sunday morning. Uh, we're talking about the military clampdown on Nigeria. Is Nigeria back to dictatorship? That's the $1 million question. Uh, Shiji Akiso, you know, is a legal practitioner with me on the show uh, talking about it. Now, let me read this to you, Shiji. Freedom of information is a fundamental human right and the touchstone of all freedoms to which the United Nations is consecrated. Now, this right is entrenched in the international and regional human rights treaties and standards guaranteeing the right of everyone to freedom of opinion and expression, including the right to seek, receive and impart information and ideas. Now, isn't this clamp down on the media uh, going to not only infringe on the human right, basic fundamental human right, isn't this going to paralyze uh, the self-esteem of an average Nigerian? What is it going to do to the average self-esteem? Well, the average self-esteem of a Nigerian, forgive me to say this, we're all Nigerians here, is not being respected. Mm. Why do you not say being followed? The basic things that every Nigerian needs, good clothing, employment, good roads, education, everything is being swept aside because somebody wants to go there and eat some few millions in the Asso Rock House there, villa. Because if they are being followed, the core values of Nigeria as a whole, the core values of Nigeria as a whole, if they are being followed, if they are being followed, Nigeria will be a better place. At least the starting point, the starting line. That's why I said, if you don't know the genesis of something, the revelation will hit you hard. You will not know how to appreciate and comprehend the revelation of that thing. Now, you are, you are, you are just stating part of what is maybe more like, it's part of, from time immemorial, the Geneva Convention mm. about the freedom of information. Now, in Nigeria, do we actually practice the freedom of information? Now, the common Nigerian, 
every news he sees or receives from the print media or from the mass media, when it goes through his head, a reasonable Nigerian will say, ah, this information I've received now, what does it tell me about my country? Do we have security in this country? Is Nigeria a better place? Is the economy good? It's just like you're painting the government black. No government likes that. Every government wants to be seen as a saint. They want to be seen as, okay, yes, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm a saint. I've done everything right. There's nothing wrong. Just the same thing with the military. The military don't want to be seen as, because the military see the press as painting them as incompetent to the, to the world, not only to Nigerians. Because whatever is being read here is being seen outside. So the military is being seen as being incompetent. And they don't like that. They don't like constructive criticisms on them. And this will affect Nigerians the way, the way it's, oh, that means I don't have the right to read what I want from the media, the print media. So the military destroying this now that, okay, we're back to the draconic age of where everybody's afraid to even go outside and take a pee. Or, okay, let me know what's going on in this country. Are we alive in this country? Is everything, is everything okay? Are we in the dark ages again? Are we back in Abacha's era? Even, I will even say this, forgive me. And no offense to any Nigerian that will hear this. Part of Abacha's era are a little bit better than what we have now in Nigeria. Because if Abacha said where now, you can't hear this about Boko Haram. So should you, do, do you see a return to, to military era? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Are you advocating for a uh, military regime? Thank God today, Sunday, God forbid. I forbid it. Because if the military were to return, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, there will be some advantages and disadvantages. I won't pray that the advantages will outweigh disadvantages. Because one, the security of this nation will be the first thing they will look at and climb down on the Boko Haram insurgents. Even the military itself, go, they will fight with their hearts. So are you see. saying the answer to the Boko Haram insurgency Where, is, or to insecurity generally, <laughs> are you saying the answer is military regime or no, military no, takeover? No, 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 no. That's not the answer. But we need a president who is iron-fisted. Who knows what is who knows what he's doing? You see that the presidency or the president isn't Should doing enough. Take a strong stand, not just sit down there and say, "Okay, yes, uh, you, you hear tomorrow, um, this UN um, office is bombed, um, just bombing, Abuja bombing." It's an insult for a federal capital territory, at least for where is that place in Nyanya, to be bombed by the so-called uh, insurgents. Shiji, you insist that the president isn't doing enough it's not doing about enough. security <laughs> in Nigeria. Now, you, you want to make suggestions? What can the president do? Imagine the president is watching this show at this moment, and he's open to suggestions from you as a legal practitioner and a well-meaning Nigerian. What are your suggestions? I'll take, I'll take a leave from China. OK. There was a bombing in one of their provinces recently, and the Chinese government took a swift action. Every subway station, every bus stop, every walkway. It's all most busy places and public places, you have military personnel everywhere. Police, the military, the task force. The same thing to be done in Nigeria. If that kind of thing should have happened, the first time it happened, let's not say, because there are sequels of things that have happened since 2011. Starting from August, when the Boko Haram started making their actions felt. Every public place, every bus stop, every area that you know that people will gather more than 20 have military personnel there. Not only military personnel, the police should walk around 24-7 on the beat. You should have the civil defense walking around. If, we, if possible, create another... Nigeria is good about that thing, creating committees. Create a different committee for security and defense of our nation. It's a separate committee where the police, the civil defense, the military, in short, all para security agencies across the Federation, they're working two for seven. So at least when they are seen all over the place, not clamping down on media houses and destroying and destroying print media. No. You do that, you walk around, you, you stop and search. That's what they were doing in China. You stop and search individuals you suspect to be like, okay, you see an individual, let me see your phone, let me see your car, let me see your boots. Don't collect any bribe, don't collect anything. Do that 24-7. At least if the Boko Haram are seeing that, they'll be afraid to move. 
But once you're not doing that, yeah, you are busy clubbing down on, on media houses, yeah, you, are, you are busy stopping people that you're not even supposed to stop, you're not even doing what you're supposed to do, the book around will have a free day. Now, the leaf you're borrowing from China, how does that look like, state of emergency? Do does it look like no, state of emergency no, no, no. in the whole no, country? No, it doesn't state, state, state of emergency entails where the, the, the democratic head or whoever is the head there will be put aside for the time being. Then a military junta, as it were, let me use that language, will now come on air and be administrator, let me use that language, sorry, yeah. will now come on air and be controlling the things in that state. Yes, we, we, both, uh, she, 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 we both understand that. We both understand that. But what I'm saying is... Doesn't that appear like they look alike? No, no, look no. alike. No, no, Just no, a look alike no, no, no. of a state of emergency. No, 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 no. There, there is it's not a look alike because in, uh, in in that kind of state where you have um, um, a, a state of emergency, there's what they call a curfew. There's no movement. Yeah. In China, there was movement, but there are stop and search checks. How do you see that working in Nigeria? Well. In China, you have well-trained pe uh, security personnel. They must have been briefed and debriefed of how to handle situations like that. We don't have that in Nigeria. Forget that, okay, it's an insult, because our security abilities are not doing well, that when the girls were kidnapped, you have to start inviting outsiders. We are not confident enough. The military, the security agencies are not confident enough to handle the situation that has been created by Boko Haram and what have you. That you are inviting other people to, to, to come and look after our problems, to come and babysit our security of races as it were. That's bad. Now, there's an area we're not looking at yet. Most newspaper outfits in Nigeria have social media platforms. Yes. Right? Now, even if uh, they, there's a clampdown on the hard copy, what about the soft copies on these social media platforms? Would, how would the, the military be able to clamp down that one? They can't. It's just, what they've just done is just a chip of the iceberg. They just took the, the print media, what the, the, the public can see. They've forgotten that the world is a global village. And Nigeria is also in that trend too. You see, most of the, the happenings of this of this nation, for example, like um, the Alu Four killings and some of the killings and most of the things that are happening, the Boko Haram are even using the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, BlackBerry messaging, and all that messaging uh, to 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 go about disseminating their information for people. So that that doesn't stop information from spreading from place to place because. Half of the population of Nigeria, as it were, we are, we are more than 160 million Nigerians. We have not less than 50 million Nigerians who use the social media to get their information. They use Facebook, they use Twitter, they use other handles, WeChat and what have you, to get their information. So that doesn't stop information from spreading. And it doesn't stop. Let me give you a, a close example now. U.S. have a hard time now. Look at Snowden. How we just got the intelligence information about the U.S., their NSA information, and put it for the whole world to see. And that, that created a big security threat or security alert for the United States. Now, Snowden is the most wanted man now, or on the top list of the most wanted man in the world now, for what he has done. But with what he has done so far right now, look at Nigeria. Imagine if Snowden were a Nigerian. Hmm. Picture that, and all the information he has about Boko Haram, he has about our head of state, he has about all the, and he puts them up there. Not that he didn't do that, he did. Apart from WikiLeaks and what have you, he did. He just packaged all the information and then put it for Nigerians to see. You know what that will be for Nigeria as a whole? That would be catastrophic. But I'm saying this here, that on one side, the abuse of the military on the media houses, the print media, We'll stop here. It's yeah. not for this, our discussion here. It's for the Senate to sit down and say, hey, call your house to order. What you have done is wrong. Mr. Presidency, please discuss with the chief of army staff, as it were. What has been done, let it stop. He must turn an apology. That's what I think he should do. Because as it now, you have betrayed the trust of the nation. By doing this now, 
Okay, now, as it were, you just mentioned earlier on about uh, ABC being, their rally being disrupted, and PDP carrying on. You, 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 you can't, what is good for the geese? It's good for the vendor. You, you, you can't take one and leave one. You can't rob Peter and people. It's not possible. You can't do that. You, you, can't, you can't take, you can't say, okay, PDP should hold a rally. Oh, you're calling that politics. Yes, PDP should hold a rally and then vote for your fire sheet and then you stop APC. What's that? That's not, that's not good politics. That's dirty politics. That w what was practiced in Nikiti State, as it were, is called dirty politics. Allowing one party to have its way and another party not to have it because the party that's having its way is in power. Power of incumbency. Wrong. Wrong <laughs> approach, Mr. President. Wrong approach. Very wrong approach. Because uh, people are not fools. This will be recorded in history. You say, okay, you want our fire share to be the next governor. Now, uh, um, this is the genesis. This is the foundation you are laying down. Somebody that will be your next governor of a state. You are not allowing the freedom of the other party to associate. You are even infringing part of the position by not allowing the other party to hold a rally. And then that kind of person, based on that foundation, now becomes the governor of a state. What do you think he will do there? Now, same applies to Jonathan, good old Jonathan. Before he entered government, he was first the vice president on a Yaradra. From being the vice president on a Yaradra, he became the acting president after Yaradra's demise. Then he became the president. Then he became president again, formally. Now, based on our foundation, what do you expect that kind of person to do? You got to the presidency by the grace of God. It's not by politics. People actually voted for you. Not based on whether it is PDP or APC or PDM or one party. No. People voted for you that, okay, I won't call it sympathy votes because they say that we want to see what you said you will do. Your manifesto, what you said you will do for this nation. And you're not doing it. Because I imagine if Yara Adwa were still the president, I don't think this kind of thing about Boko Haram, all this infringement here and there, human rights being flouted with flawless disregard for the security of any human lives in this present era that we're in now. My God, we're in for a showcase. Because if you look at Nigeria now, we need to put our house in order. So the outside world can see us that we are serious. Look at Egypt, the new president. See what people said about him. Fine, he was a former military, um, military personnel who later became this thing. What did he say when he was when he was campaigning? He said, "Look, my fellow Egyptians, especially he say he's speaking directly to the young. I should go go out there and vote for whoever you think you can vote for. It may not be me. It can be any other person. Just go out there and vote. Come out and vote. And they did. They voted for him. Look at what Jonathan said. That yes, he's coming out in full force in 2015. You are bothered about 2015." You're not bothered about the security of this nation. You're not bothered about what Boko Haram is doing. The innocent lives that are being shared every day in the north and the northeast. You're not bothered. You're bothered about that seat. You want to come back and sit down on that seat. And talking about being bothered, well, uh, something that's getting everybody bothered in Nigeria at the moment is uh, what is causing a lot of concern to people in different parts of Nigeria and Bido Koro has something that I want you to see. Uh, the federal government clamped down on the print media hasn't stopped and this is making the federal government uh, close the, the uh, stop and close the circulation of newspapers in some parts of the country and this has generated concern across board. Bido Koro did something on it. Please watch this. Following the reported seizure of some newspapers by the military, newspaper sales and distribution has been affected in Oshogbo. Only a few vendor stands are open for business. There seems to be a growing fear of possible harassment by military personnel. Media affairs analyst Jamiu Olawumi and Adilani Badirinwa both criticized the clampdown, saying it is undemocratic. It's a total negation of what democracy is all about. Uh, because first and foremost, I think if there is an erring situation on the part of a newspaper, there are procedures, processes, the courts are there, you know, and so many other things that could have been done, not outright seizure of newspapers right on the streets. Take it beyond deprivation. Take it to the level of the expectation of modern army 
or military in a country that faces these security challenges, that you could not scan to look for arms, but send soldiers on the street to look for it in the newspapers, and you still call yourself giant of Africa, you still claim to fund the military, then what pattern of funding? What are the priorities when we fund? What is competition, peer review between Nigerian military and other military uh, organizations across the globe? The publisher of Oshun Defender, Kola Olabisi, condemned the act, saying it is a hindrance of the rights of Nigerians to have information. In the precipice, uncalled for, it's uncalled for when we are in a democracy. Even during the uh, uh, period that uh, uh, the late uh, General Sonny Abacha uh, was uh, calling that shot, uh, we experienced this, uh, the same thing. When uh, uh, Ibrahim Babangida, President Ibrahim, uh, the, uh, the military president, Ibrahim Babangida, when he was calling that shot, the same thing was experienced. But now that uh, we say there is a democracy, I see no reason why people some people who cannot have their uh, way cannot be allowed to have their say. Alabisi advised the federal government to take a more cautious approach. On visiting some newspaper stands in Oshogo, the newspaper vendors seem to be uneasy. Pete Okoro, Court TV News, Oshogo. You're still watching Court TV News, and of course, the show is. Court Digest this Sunday morning. Uh, Shiji Akiso, you know, is still very much with it. We'll take a break right now to fetch you the news on the hour. When we come back, uh, we'll take on Shiji on more issues. Please stay with us. Court TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electionary campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 0 1 4 5 3 3 4 0 7. A 24 hour news station.